storybook romance has its happy ending. From ancient St. James's Palace, a king's nephew goes out to marry the girl of his choice. Following Earl Harwood's car through the dense crowds comes his mother, the Princess Royal. For her, like any other mother on her son's wedding day, this is a proud occasion. And four miles away in Kensington, there is another proud mother, Mrs. Sophie Stein. To this tall daughter of a clergyman and her husband, a well-known musician, was born 22 years ago in Vienna, the girl who today becomes a royal bride. It was in 1938 that her parents brought Marion, then a schoolgirl in pigtails, to England. Marion Stein marries an earl, 11th in line to the throne of England. Two thousand cheer the bride away from Kensington on her journey to Mayfair. There, at fashionable St. Mark's Church, it seems as if all London has turned out to see her wed. Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip interrupted their Balmoral holiday to be present. The bride's mother, wearing a purple silk dress, follows them into the church. There, too, are the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester. A hundred policemen hold back the crowd as Earl Harwood arrives, almost unnoticed, with his best man, his brother, Gerald. The Princess Royal is the next arrival, and following her come the two grown-up bridesmaids, both personal friends of the bride. Loud cheers greet the arrival of the King and Queen, who with Princess Margaret had travelled through the night from Scotland to attend. Hardly have the cheers died down when they ring out anew for the bride. For any girl, her wedding day is the day of her life. And as this pretty girl from Vienna arrives at St. Mark's in her shimmering brocade gown, it is her big moment too. The thousands outside the church pause a while during the solemn ceremony. Then comes the great moment as outstep man and wife, Earl and Countess of Howe. A royal wedding, yes but even more, a people's wedding. A wedding that momentarily casts away the clouds over Britain and brings a happy smile to the thousands who had waited to see this radiant pair. A great day nears its end. But the eager thousands, some of whom had waited all night, are still full of excitement. The king and queen are the centre of another ovation from the crowd. They are quick to notice how well the king looks. Along a route lined by onlookers ten deep, a royal car takes the new mistress of the Harwood Mansion and her husband back to St. James's Palace. There, a brilliant reception awaits the 900 guests headed by the King and Queen. Two mothers, one a princess, one a housewife, share in the happiness of their children. For this romance, founded on a mutual love of music, is a romance that thrills the nation. As the Earl and his Countess drive away on their first stage of their honeymoon, they receive a tumultuous expression of goodwill, one not seen in London since the wedding of the Princess. A BEA Viking waits for the couple at Northcote. No special plane this, but the normal evening flight to the continent. To the other passengers, they are just another couple of travellers, and it's only when a battery of press photographers catches up with them that they realize that this is the royal honeymoon plane. The Howard's immediate destination is Paris. Later, they are expected in Rome and will then spend a fortnight in Capri. To an unassuming royal couple, the nation wishes a long and happy life. <laughs>